What I would do to go out with Dylan McKay. I don't know. Everyone says he's trouble. Well, he can trouble me all he wants. <laughs> hey, Dylan. Hey, Kelly. Brenda and I were just talking. Which do you think guys like best on girls, long or short hair? Hmm, that's a deep question. Personally, I prefer blondes. Really? Really. Truly. So you're Brandon's sister, huh? Yeah, I'm Brandon's sister. Yeah, she's Brandon's sister. Bye, girls. He's so weird. Yeah. that was you, but didn't your hair used to be a little different? Yes. No. Well, maybe just a little bit. I hate this collar, if that's what you can call it. It's not that bad. If one more person says that. It's not that bad. Don't all you guys out here have a thing for blondes? I mean, that's what you told Kelly. Blondes, brunettes, redheads, girls in tank tops. <clears throat> but if you really hate that color, I, uh, I have a friend who does hair, and he owes me a favor. Well, I don't really hate the color. But maybe we should still go see him for a second opinion or something, don't you think? No problem. I like your butts. I mean your bike. Oh, well, thank you. Hop on. My bike, that is. Don't tell me you're babysitting tonight and every video store was out of dirty dancing. Do you know I had to go to three different places to find it? You must have it memorized by now. Well, whatever gets you through the night, right? I mean, isn't that what you always say? That's what I always say. Hi, I didn't see you. I saw you. Brenda? Telephone? Excuse me. Probably a very important political call. You, uh, keep popping up on me today. So you were saying you're, uh, into videotape, huh? Yeah, I like movies. You ever see Animal Crackers? You know, Marx Brothers? I think so, on TV. Oh, it's so much better on the big screen. It's too bad you're on duty tonight, or you could see what I mean. Well, actually, my plans got poxed. You want to come along? Yeah. <laughs> Friend, this is your night. Actually, it's our night. Room 271. Won't anybody notice that we're gone? We'll make our appearance, and then we'll make our disappearance. And you won't have to worry about your clothes for a while. What do you say, 15 more minutes and we make our exit? Dylan, I'm a little nervous. Brand, don't be. Everything's gonna be great. Yeah, well, that's what you keep on saying. <sighs> Look, it's just that we've been building it up for so long. And it's not that I'm not ready, believe me, I am. What are you trying to say? Somehow you'll be disappointed. <sighs> Brad, we're not going to be judging each other up there. We're going to be enjoying each other. Well, I bet you used that line before. Brad, you're not just another notch on my belt. If that's what this was about, I would have had you up there months ago. Oh, really? Yes, really. So what is this all about? Don't 
Don't you know? I love you. Dylan, wait until we're in the room. Dylan, this is so beautiful. Yeah, I thought you'd like it. Do you know why I'm so lucky? <laughs> why? How many girls get to have sex for the first time with someone they love? I don't know. I've never really taken an opinion poll. Mm. <sighs> Dylan! Woo! Dylan, stop! Put me down! Oh. I'm sorry. I just can't control myself. Well, don't fight it. We are in the room. We certainly are. Brenda, you're glowing. Yeah, you know, well, you have a goofy grin all over your face, and you better wipe it off, otherwise people will talk. So let them. Brian, you don't have to do that. What will the maid think? They will think that two people had a very, very good time here tonight. Mm. Listen, I've been thinking. So have I. Look, long distance relationships scare me. I saw what it did to Brandon and his girlfriend from Minnesota. Brenda, that was different. Cheryl had problems. Absence can make the heart grow fonder. And what does it do for a roaming eye? You know what I was just thinking? What? How much I love you. Really? Me too. You know, I was gonna maybe be in Romeo and Juliet, and now I'm sort of living it. Parting is such sweet sorrow, huh? We could always run away. Are you serious? I don't know. What we have to do is talk. And what we have to do is break up. That's what I came over here to tell you. So all this was just a lead in? No. I wanted to be with you one last time. I thought we agreed at the beach. Well, I thought about it some more. Friend. Dylan, I just have to do this now. I should say something. Uh, speaking for us Walsh people, I'd like to thank you all for letting us become a part of your world. <laughs> kind of sneaks up on you here, you know. It's kind of hard to say goodbye. You know, it made me realize that Home is where the heart is, not where the highest paycheck is. So I've decided that my family and I, we're going to stay here <laughs> and keep our wonderful life. Yeah, right. All right. All right. <laughs> Damn, Bren, I don't believe it. I mean, I, how? Dylan, I thought you said that we did everything right. Yeah, we did. I knew it was a mistake. It was wonderful. Bren, it was great. Dylan, what if I'm pregnant? Then I'll do everything I can to help you and support you. Bren, it's my problem, too. It doesn't feel that way. Yeah.
what's wrong? Everything. It's not the end of the world. Your parents will get over it. Yeah, maybe. They shouldn't have made you feel guilty, Brent. That's not fair. Tell me they didn't. Believe it or not, this has nothing to do with my parents. It's just the icing on the cake. I understand. You had a bad scare. I don't blame you for being upset. Just made me think about a lot of things. Do you know how lucky I feel that I met someone like you? You're lucky too. When we first started going out, I thought you were so sexy. It was so exciting how we flirted and everybody looked at us. And then I fell in love with you. And I fell in love with you. And I trusted you enough to have sex when I've said no before. I know. What are you saying? I just feel like we've crossed this imaginary line. It all feels too much right now, worrying about condoms and birth control pills and seeing a gynecologist and getting pregnant and what my parents are thinking. Is it getting too scary? I just don't know what we're about. Like, things are happening too much too fast. I think we need to stop seeing each other at least for a while. Brian, you're overreacting. Stop worrying about what your parents think and figure out what you feel. I have. I know what I'm feeling. No, you don't. Everything you've told me so far only adds up to one thing. You're afraid. That's not enough of a reason. Dylan, I do know what I'm feeling. And I need to break up with you. No. No. Dylan, I'm sorry. Feeling bad, Brad. Me too. So why are you doing it? Dylan, I need some time. You know, I thought if we ever broke up, I would feel this tremendous sense of relief. I could go back to being myself. But something happened. I fell in love with you or something. And I stopped being a loner. Dylan, I think that's wonderful. I think it's terrible. The only person in this world that I have to depend on is me. And I always have to remember it. Dylan, that's not true. You can depend on me. Oh, really? Dylan, just because I need some time and a break doesn't mean that I still don't love you or that this isn't painful for me, too. Well, maybe that's what they mean when they say love hurts. Dylan, I got so close, it scared me. I don't want to be scared with you. I know. If we're meant to be together, time will tell. Can I take you home? No. I think I should walk. Goodbye, Dylan. I am not stubborn. Come on in. No. You avoiding me? Dylan, I made a promise to myself. I need this time. Brenda, how am I going to get through this without you? You are the only one that I trust. I'm not ready. I need to think things out to be sure about what I want. Don't make me beg, Bran. I won't. Dylan, I'm sorry, I can't. Can't what? I can't do this. Do you need anything, a soda or something? Yeah, that'd be great.
Your mom said there are some sandwiches in the refrigerator. Okay. And an apple. Okay. Anything else? Could I get a blanket? And my book's on that table right over there. Will that be all? Just one more thing. What? You. Dylan. Ow. I'm sorry. No, it's, it's OK. Don't stop. You know, the hardest thing I ever had to do was trying to stay away from you. When you skip school three days in a row, I worry about you. I was just blowing off some steam. I'll be back tomorrow. Where were you? Around. <laughs> fine, Brad. You don't look fine, Dylan. Do you know what time it is? You were supposed to be here at 8 o'clock. I'm sorry, Brad. Forgive me. You've been drinking. Big boy. you meant by blowing off steam? Oh, lighten up, Brad. I'm under control. No, you're not, Dylan. Look at you. So, um, where do your parents keep the liquid? Are you crazy? My parents will hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. What? No scotch. I just want a shot. Dylan, don't do this. Brenda... I already have one woman in my life who thinks she's my mother, OK? Damn it, Dylan, if you are going to drink, get the hell out of my house. I thought I could count on you. Thanks for listening. Dylan, <sighs> my father says I can't see you until you get your life together. Yeah, well, he's probably right. I don't want to lose you, Dylan. Not this time. I'll be all right, Brent. Promise. Okay, coach. I'll sit the bench for a while. Time out's over. No, <laughs> come on, come on. We're supposed to be studying history, not sex education. Well, I I'm sorry. There's just something about this Louisiana purchase, you know, it drives me wild. Dylan, I'm serious. We should be doing more than this. Oh, uh, you know, I think so too. Let's go upstairs. No. Look, I mean more than making out all the time. And not that I don't like it, because I do. I like it a lot. It's just that it's practically all we ever do anymore. Oh, that's not true. I mean, last weekend we went to a movie. Yeah, and we barely saw any of it. Well, it's not my fault. I mean, I wasn't exactly kissing myself, you know. Look, all I'm saying is we should make a little extra effort to do something interesting or cultural. So we won't feel guilty when we're making out all the time. Exactly. Well, we're off to a promising start. It's so... Romantic.
What you doing? Mm. I'm waiting for you. Yeah. Does that mean that you're actually ready to go? Of course not. It just means that now it's your turn to wait for me. What's this, Brent? Oh, it's for the Blaze, the special edition. Like hell it is. As often as you read about girls who become pregnant unintentionally, you cannot imagine the feelings until you believe you are in the situation yourself. You were going to print that? I am going to print it. I don't kiss and tell. I, I, I don't talk about my conquests in the locker room. <laughs> Dylan, I know you don't. Look, I'm not saying anything that's untrue or even embarrassing. No, it's not embarrassing, but it's very personal to me, and you are not going to print it. Dylan, come on. I mean, I can just redo it. It's not as if I don't remember what I wrote. I wish you'd forget it. Dylan, wait a second. Are you leaving? Are you going to go ahead with this? Dylan. Good night, bro. Dylan, wait! Dylan, wait! Dylan! Dylan, please come inside. I'm not going to try and change your mind if it means that much to you. Just tell me why you're so upset. I can't believe you. Dylan, I was only writing that piece because I think there's a need for it. I was scared to death when I thought I was pregnant. It would help me so much to have known that there was someone else out there our age who had been through it. You wrote about something very personal that I was involved in for the whole school to read. You didn't even ask me how I felt. I'm sorry, I didn't see it that way. Yeah. You have good intentions, Brent. But right now, I need to keep my private life very, very private. I thought you knew that. Dylan, I was writing about me. About my feelings. <laughs> They're gonna know who the guy is, Brent. How many boyfriends have you had at West Beverly? One. And I'd like to keep it that way. Why don't you come back inside? Come on, Dylan. What are we doing for Valentine's Day? You're driving me crazy. What's the general idea? All Brandon would tell me is that it's something very romantic. Hmm, it is. Then give me some details. Come on, another hint, something. OK. It's red, and it's warm. You're giving me a sweater? No. It's a little more intimate than that. A red flannel lingerie. <laughs> Funny. No, it's closer to your heart. Red, warm, and close to my heart. I don't have a clue. Good. Dylan, it's already Valentine's Day. Tell me where we're going. Not till tonight. This is nuts. Give me another clue. OK, it's not for kids. In fact, kids aren't even allowed. Really? Yeah. Brian, you got to be at least 17 years old to do what we are going to do tonight. Ooh. OK, we're heading out. Wow, Mrs. Walsh, you look great. Well, thank you, Dylan. So, where are you guys off to? Oh, Dad's taking me to an early Valentine's Day dinner at the beach. Hey, we're going to miss the sunset if we don't skedaddle. Come on. Have a good time. Oh, will you be here when we get back? Ask him. I don't even know where we're going. Well, your plans don't involve anything uh, dangerous or, you know, risque. Dad. <clears throat> hey, I promise you, we'll be well taken care of in a public place, sir. Thank you, Dylan. Lying down in a public place where you have to be 17 while enjoying something red, warm, and close to the heart. Keep guessing. I'll pick you up at 7. <sighs> Dylan, come on. At least tell me what to wear. I mean, is it dressy, casual, or what? Wear anything you want. Oh, actually, Bren, you know what? Wear short sleeves. Thank you. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Okay. 
You've kept me in suspense long enough. Where are we going? We are going to a play. A play? Yeah. It's called Love Letters. It's, uh, it's about a man and a woman who are in love with each other for a lifetime. Although they never really get together, uh, their love is so strong that it grows in spite of them. Dylan, it sounds beautiful. Oh, it is. But I don't get it. I mean, what does the play have to do with all those clues? Well, the play is not the only place we're going tonight. We are going to go someplace else first. Donating blood? You know, I never would have guessed this in a million years. Well, it's like I said. You got to be 17. We will be laying down, and blood is warm, red, and close to your heart. It's probably a very good thing that you kept it a secret, because I just might not have come. Brent, I know you're scared, but it's not that big a deal, really. Yeah. Actually, I've been wanting to do it for a long time. See, when I was a little kid, I was in an automobile accident. My head went through the windshield until I got the scar. I needed a lot of blood. Anyway, I decided that when I got older, I'd give some back. I thought you wouldn't do it with me. But why tonight? The accident happened on Valentine's Day. Dylan, it's weird, but somehow this is the most romantic thing we could ever have done together. Happy Valentine's Day, Brad. Happy Valentine's Day. It's my opinion that this relationship has certainly gone too far. And I think it's time for the two of you to give it a break. Yeah, well, maybe I just better go home. Dylan. It's OK, Brad. See you in school. Tomorrow. If you want to punish me, then you punish me. But don't blame Dylan. It's not his fault. In fact, until we got to Baja, Dylan didn't even know that I... That you're lying to us? I think we should keep our distance for a little while. What do you mean? You and my father, or you and me? Both. I can't believe this is happening. Like, if you're not going to the wedding, then neither am I. Tell that to your father. To unite this special couple in holy matrimony. Do you, Dylan McKay, take Brenda Walsh to be your lawfully wedded wife? To have and to hold from this day forward in sickness and health, for richer, for poorer, till death do you part? I do. Do you, Brenda Walsh, take Dylan McKay to be your lawfully wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward in sickness and health, for richer, for poorer, till death do you part? I do. I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Dylan, I'm really glad you came. Yeah, well, I'm not so sure it was a good idea. Why? Because your dad keeps glaring at me, Brad. Yeah, well, he's not the only one who makes decisions in this family. To tell you the truth, I don't really give a damn anymore. So why don't you just relax and have a good time? Not after what went down this morning. I tried to apologize to him, Brad. All I could do was dredge up the past. It was like he was waiting for this to happen so he could hit me with all that. Well, what did he say? Doesn't matter. I just feel like an idiot because I put my trust in the guy and I do one little thing wrong and he totally shuts me out. Dylan, I'm sure he didn't mean it. Yeah, he meant it all right. You know, Brent, only one person's ever made me feel that bad. He's in jail now. Dylan! Dylan, wait. Did he apologize? Not exactly. Well, what did he say? It's my fault, all right? I just got too close to all of you. I won't make that mistake again. Dylan, wait! Brenda, let him go. I don't want to let him go. You are not to see him anymore. What did you say to him?
I'm gonna see your father tomorrow, Brent. Why? Because I want a new trustee for my money. Dylan, come on. Don't rock the boat. I mean, things are going great. What? This is great? You enjoying this, Brent? Sneaking around? What are you gonna do when Don and Kelly go to France? I don't know. I'll tell them that I'm going to a movie or going for a walk or something. I'll handle it. You can't even mention my name in your house. I don't really think it's in my best interest for your father to have any control over my life. You know, I used to think it was special. The way that my dad was looking out for you. It seemed like it made you a part of the family. Well, he's made it very clear that I am not part of the family. I never will be. I sure wish we were going to Paris. Nah, I used to go to Europe every summer when I was a little kid. You went to Europe every summer? We went to Lake Minnetonka. <laughs> well, my dad was kind of a high roller back then, you know? So we go everywhere first class. Big hotels, limousines. A limousine would come and take us out into the country, and we have picnics just like this. It was great. Sounds wonderful. No, yeah, it was. I'd take you there right now if I could. See you tomorrow? Maybe. Dylan. Brian, I'm getting really tired of sneaking around. Well, the only other choice is for us not to see each other. Is that what you want? I'm not saying that. I know you're not. Look, why not call you once my parents are asleep, okay? All right. I love you. I love you too. with my parents anymore. What happened? You were right. We can't sneak around, and I can't keep on fighting with them. My parents don't approve of my life. They don't have to watch me live it. Dylan. It's going to be all right. Don't worry. What am I doing? You want to have this burrito, babe? It's really good. I'm fine, thank you. You sure? Yeah, I'm not really into frozen lard and hydrogenated bean oil. Did you or did you not tell me I could get anything I wanted? I also said we desperately needed to do a load of laundry. If you were so desperate, why didn't you go to the store? In what car, Dylan? You were gone all day. You should have walked. You know, I would have walked, but you told me you were going. I went! Oh, I just forgot to get everything that we needed. Look, Dylan! Hi, guys. Did I come in a bad time? No, not at all. Yeah, come on. I was just on my way to the store. I gotta get some detergent. But I'll be back. Are you hungry? Yeah, what do you got? Oh, there's a killer bean burrito in the freezer in there. Cool. Later, Chief. It's a round trip ticket to Paris. Look, has your name on it. And I understand there's a lycée on the Rue des Jardins that is holding a place for you under the name of Kelly Taylor. You're actually sending me to Paris? Well, it gives us some breathing space and a way to start all over again when you get back. And a clever way to keep me from Dylan. Brenda. That's what this is all about, isn't it? A bribe? A way to buy my love? My God, this is so Beverly Hills. I can't believe I'm sitting in the same room with you. Bren. Have any other suggestions? Brenda, you gotta calm down. 
I'll be fine as soon as I get out of this house. No, listen to me. You're not thinking clearly here. If I'm not Dylan, it's because of them. Look, they are manipulative. They are arrogant. They are mean. Well, yeah, they're your parents. But Brent, they're not perfect, OK? So who is? Listen to you. I'm being realistic here, OK? So what if your father's motives are bogus and heavy-handed? So what if he's trying to set our agenda for us again? We are talking about a chance to see Paris. OK? I've been there. You have it. And I think that you're making a big mistake if you let this opportunity to see that part of the world slip by just because your father pushes you too hard and doesn't know when to let go. Do you know what I'm saying? Look, Brenda, it's obvious that you are as frustrated and angry with us as we are with you. But you should know that sending you to Paris was my brilliant idea, not your father's. In fact, he predicted you'd see it as a ploy to keep you and Dylan apart. Are you telling me that the thought never even entered into your mind? <sighs> Look, maybe it did. But I just don't want to see you make the same mistake I did. Oh, come on, Mom. And you and Dad lived together before you got married. You guys managed to survive. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about... <sighs> Look. When I was in college, I was going to spend my junior year at the Sorbonne in Paris. And then I met your father. And I decided to stay in Minnesota. Well, I never even thought I was a complete fool, but I insisted. I knew exactly what I was doing. I'd have plenty of time to travel after I graduated. And of course, 20 years later, I, I've never been to Paris or London or, or anywhere, really. Except Beverly Hills. So are you saying I could still go to Paris if I wanted to? Well, probably easier to send you to Paris than to keep you locked up in the basement for the rest of the summer. Especially considering we don't have a basement. Look, honey, whether you go or not, we're going to get through this. We really will. So you just let us know what you want to do. I can't believe this is really happening. Me neither. Now I got to start doing my own laundry again. I'll miss you, too, Dylan. Go on. Just, uh, don't fall in love over there, OK? It goes for you, too. wake up early to take a walk down the Seine, just to see the moon get lost in the morning light. And I'd be thinking about you, halfway around the world, wondering if you were somewhere on the beach looking up at the same moon. I was. And then I'd wonder if there was anyone else in your arms. After a while, I just stopped worrying about it. I figured if there was anyone else, it was only because I was there and you were here and vice versa. That's right. Dylan, I met someone in Paris. Rick, my tour guide, well, actually, I was his tour guide. It's kind of a long story. We were only together the last couple of days I was there, and it really didn't amount to anything much. So, are you finished with your summer vacation? Yes. What about you? Are you ready to start our senior year together? You and me? Dylan. Welcome home, Brenda.
Fran, what do you say we blow this pop stand and find someplace else to eat? I can't stand another year of cafeteria food. What do you have in mind? Well, I don't know. Um, my place? Yeah, right. I know how much food is in your fridge. Hey, nobody said anything about having to eat. I don't think so. Not the first day of school, anyway. <sighs> Just a thought. I'll hold that thought. Let her go, Brad. Why? I just want to have lunch alone. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> I still can't stop thinking about the deal with those testing people. Now, oh, Brad, would you just give it a rest, okay? I don't want to talk about it. I just don't know why you won't consider taking the test again. Do you believe me? I mean, do you believe me, Brad? Of course I do. You've never lied to me, Dylan. And I've always respected and loved you for that. In fact, when I got back from France, the reason why I told you that I met that guy was because you've always been honest with me. Brenda, that's not necessarily true. What? While you were gone this summer, there was a girl. I'm sorry. How could you? Wait a minute. Did, weren't we just talking about your little French fling, Brenda? I think you know exactly how things like this happen. I told you about that when it happened. You could have told me about this, Dylan. It was being called a liar. I mean, it made me see what a hypocrite I can be. I just couldn't live with it. I'm glad you got your guilty conscience all cleaned up. Brenda, I am sorry. Who was she, Dylan? <sighs> was it that girl Stacy again? No. Then who? Who is not important, is it? I don't know. You tell me. No, it's not. Don't forget about spare me all the details. Just take me home, all right? Brenda, I, I needed to tell you the truth. Well, you did. I'm very impressed with your integrity. Now take me home. Look, um... Instead of drafting angry letters to the testing service, why don't you just take the test over? Hey, have we been through this? When are you going to quit harping on me? I'm not harping on anything. I don't understand why everything is a battle with you. What have you got to be so angry about? Hey, let's see what you would do if you were falsely accused of something, OK? I know one thing. I'd be a hell of a lot more realistic than you're being. Brenda, if you're not going to get behind me on this thing, why don't you just leave me alone? Fine, I will leave you alone. Good. Because this isn't about the SAT, Dylan. And we should stop pretending that it is. What does that mean? Don, do you realize that we both told each other that our little flings don't mean anything? Well, they do mean something. And it's about time we both faced up to that. I know, Bren. That's why I told you about what happened this summer. Oh, come off of it. You told me because you felt guilty. Well, so do I. Look, the guy I met in Paris showed up in L.A. this week, and I went out with him this afternoon. Dylan, I love you. But we need a rest for both of our sakes. Are you sure, Brad? You sure about what you're saying? You better mean it, because I'm not going to try and stop you this time. Dylan, will you sit down? I'm not sure about anything. But we can't go on like this. So where do we go from here? Wherever we want, I guess. You mean that? Yeah, I do. So this is it, then? Dylan, don't hate me. I could never hate you, Brent. You better go.
Brenda. I can't believe this. I can't believe you would do this to me. You said Dylan could go out with whoever he wanted. And you said you were my best friend. What a joke. Hey, give it a rest, Brent, all right? You know, if you're trying to make me jealous, Dylan, it won't work. Hey, you're the one who broke up with me, all right? Don't you ever forget it. So how long has this been going on with you two? Since about 6.30. You know, Kelly, if you're trying to lose your bimbo image, I honestly don't think this will help. Look, Brenda. Listen, I gotta say something here. Obviously, there's a lot of history between all of you, but hurting each other is not gonna accomplish a thing. By the way, I'm Rick. I'm Dylan. Brent tells me you're a hell of a tour guide, Rick. Can we go, please? Wait. Why don't we all just sit down and try and talk this thing out? I mean, I know it's gonna be a little bit uncomfortable, but you guys have known each other for too long to just blow it off like this. I am not a bimbo, okay? <laughs> Whatever you say, Kelly. But I was always taught that if it looks like a duck and it walks like a duck, go to hell. Excuse me. Brent, all the Thanksgiving sales on Rodeo are still going on. You want to go? I can't afford those clothes at 50% off. Oh, come on. You'll find something. Or else you'll just watch me buy. Oh, that sounds like fun. Come on, I hate to show Hi, Kel. Hi, Brent. You guys have a nice Thanksgiving? Okay, this was a few nights ago. They got together to talk things over. I'm sure you're wondering why we both wanted to meet with you. I thought you wanted to buy me some pie. Yeah, humble pie. My favorite kind. Seriously. I don't know about you, but for me, these past few weeks have been a nightmare. I mean, we're at each other's throats. We're arguing all the time. We can't trust one another. It hasn't been a picnic for me, either. And that's why we've got to make a change. Dylan, we both love you. We both find you very attractive. And very sexy. And appealing. What exactly are you two suggesting? Oh. This kid has seen too many French movies. Maybe you've seen too many French movies. I think... We should all stop trying to hide our mutual feelings. Admit how we all feel and agree to be friends. Good friends. Platonic friends. I see. Dylan, you don't want to be tied down right now. You said so yourself. And we could all use a cooling off period. That way, none of us will get hurt. And we're all in the same boat. So what do you think? I think I love you both. And I want to keep it that way. Good. That was easy. <laughs> to friendship. Wasn't that lovely? Hmm. You guys never decorated my cookies that good. Dylan, Kelly and I have been talking. Always a dangerous trend. You see, this Three Musketeers thing was a bad idea. So we've decided on a new plan. Wait, wait, wait. you decided? Yep. You can't have your cookie and eat it, too. Wow. So you've got to decide which of us you want to be with on New Year's Eve. Or else. Now, if you excuse us, we have to go tell Santa what we want for Christmas. Goodbye. Hi. Hi. What's going on? Um, we need to talk to you. Come on in. Um, why don't we take a walk instead? Let me get my jacket. Okay, let's go. Brenda, please try to understand how much you mean to us, all right? I know this is hard for you, Brenda. It's hard for all of us. Don't touch me. Look, Dylan, you have made your choice, and I have to live with that. And I should have seen it coming, but I don't have to stand here and listen to it anymore. I'm going home, OK? No. Brenda, we need to tell you something else. Well, I don't want to hear it. I've heard enough. Well, you're going to have to, Brent, because neither one of us can stand to lie to you anymore. This summer, while you were in Paris? Look, I told you it was with the girl, right? Kelly was the girl. I thought you guys were my friends. I loved you. I trusted you both. Brenda, please. We didn't plan this, Brent. No, of course you didn't plan it, Dylan. You just let it happen. And you lied to me, both of you, for months and months. 
You know, when I broke up with you, you made it seem like Kelly was just some girl you picked to go out with. You made it seem so innocent, like it was my fault. Neither of us wanted to hurt you. You didn't care about how I felt at all, Kelly. That's not true. Did you two sleep together? No. And why should I believe you? Because it's the truth. Why are you doing this to me? Because we owe it to you, Bran. I mean, don't you think that we all owe ourselves a little something more than this, that maybe we could start again from someplace a little more honest? Honesty? Is that what you think this is about, Dylan? I don't think so. Look, I hate you both. Never talk to me again. I should be all right. I hope so. Are we? Swallow my pride and do the right thing. I, I think you need another pillow. I'm just gonna go in the hall and get it. You know it's gonna be okay. Just keep telling me that, will you? This tie. Not if you don't want to. Good. Shall we go? If you say so. Threw away all my stuff, huh? You took down all the pictures. No, they're just packed away in a box in the garage. Out of sight, out of mind. Dylan, you've never been out of my mind. Brent, if this hadn't happened, I, I wouldn't be welcome here. Dylan, you and Kelly hurt me pretty badly. But it's nothing compared to what you're going through. And in the grand scheme of things, you'll look back years from now and I'll just be a girl you knew in high school. No, you won't. No, you won't, Brad. Not after everything. It's nice to know. You better get going. Do me a favor, Brad. We got me tired of this thing. So there I am sitting at the senior breakfast and I'm thinking about Minnesota. And I wanted to say, hey everybody, I got in. But something held me back. Maybe you thought they would try and convince you to stay. Or maybe I was scared that they wouldn't. What do you want to do? I'm torn. My surefire remedy in a case like this is to just flip a coin. Is that what you did with me and Kelly? Sorry, that didn't come out right. You don't have to answer that. No, I want to. 
Because what I think you're really asking me is if there were no Kelly, would you and I still be together? The thought has crossed my mind. The truth is, I don't know. I loved you more than I ever thought I could love anybody. Maybe that was a problem. It was just too intense for both of us. For us to live together at that point was a huge mistake. And you got so incredibly offended when I tried to clean this place up. Well, hey, dust adds a little character. I guess Kelly doesn't mind it, huh? I guess not. Was that her on the phone before? Yeah. Why didn't you tell her I was here? She didn't ask. But I have a question for you, Bren. Why'd you come over here? I guess I want to say goodbye. In private. How private? Ooh, say by the bell. Hey, remember me? Vaguely, yes. How are you? I'm OK. Aren't you supposed to be in school or something? Couldn't I ask you the same question? I'm glad you didn't. I'm sorry you did. Mind if I join you? Have a seat. One condition, no college talk. Well, that's an easy promise to make. Now we need some service. Well, I'm in no hurry. So there I was in the middle of the night, crashing in the dorm hallway because my roommate had decided that her boyfriend should stay in our room. And I'm thinking, who needs this? Besides, the classes I got were so incredibly boring. Yeah, it's also lame. Yeah, but every single time I try and explain it to my parents, they just don't get it. Same with Kelly. It's, it, it's like there's only one track, one goal, one destination. It's just not true. Absolutely. I mean, there are other choices. Right. So what are you going to do today? Nothing. What are you doing? Nothing. We could do it together. You know, I really missed you, Dylan. I missed you too, Brent. I called you in Minnesota to wish you good luck. I could have used it. Well, this is it. You want to keep walking? What, right off the pier? Yeah, maybe. What's the alternatives? I'm thinking. Riva, Riva! Muchachos, aquí viene! Riva! Whoa, look out now. So, what do you think? Go fish? Yeah. Yeah. Right, you little cunt. Hey. All right. Okay. Oh, you slippery little sucker. Allow me. I am from the land of 10,000 legs. That's right. Okay, the trick is to mm -hmm. get the hook in and around in one clean motion. Oh. Uh, Bren? Did I hook you? Just my sweatshirt. Don't move. Thanks. I've seen that look before. It's the same one you have. We can't go down this road again. Why not? I think because I don't want to ruin this feeling that's between us now. Yeah, you're right. Probably better off as just friends. Close friends. The closest. Not only because we're celebrating my son and daughter-in-law's 20 years of blissful matrimony, but because tonight I have the honor of announcing the engagement of my granddaughter, Brenda Walsh, to Mr. Stuart Carson. What? Look at me, bro. <laughs> So you do remember me? Yeah, of course, man. It's been a long time. Long enough, I hope. What does that mean? It means I hope you cleaned up your act. I have. Why is that any of your business? Well, it's Brenda. 
She's very important to me. I just want to make sure you know that if you ever hurt her in any way, you'll have to answer to me. With you, the earth was a bed of grass. We slept in it like two seeds. With you, I was more than I am. Your mouth, the sun, made everything possible. I burn with the love that I lost when I lost you. Thank you, Dylan. Thanks to all of you for coming tonight on our first Thursday night reading. Thanks again. It was beautiful. Thanks. I found it last night. Kind of reminds me of you. <sighs> you want to get some coffee? Yeah, sure. Hello? Kel, you're not going to believe this. She what? She is? When? OK. Bye. You are not going to believe this, but Brenda's on her way to Las Vegas to get married. Well, there must be housekeeping to turn down the bed. Well, tell them the bed's already turned down. I can't believe how rude they are. I'll get it. Surprise! Surprise! Uh, how did you guys all know I was here? What do you think? Oh, you've got the biggest mouth. I just thought you'd want all your friends to see you cross the threshold. Mm, I've been thinking about you guys all day. Well, how bad a friend? Have you done it yet? Done what, Kelly? Get married. Are we too late? Nope. Stuart and I decided to get married at the stroke of midnight. Isn't that romantic? Aww. Yeah, that's real cool. Let's go. Dylan, I'm so glad you're here. Well, I got you thinking about it, Brian. You're right. I have no right to tell you how to run your life. You're a smart young woman, and you'll do fine. Wouldn't miss it for the world. Well, it's a good thing we got here early to get a good seat. Brandon, I am really nervous. Nothing to be nervous about, is there? No. I'm just glad you're here to give me away. Yeah, me too. Although I know Dad would have loved to have done it. Yeah, I know. You know, I think eventually he'll accept Stuart as his son. After all, it is till death do you part. Well, this is it. In a world of alienation and poverty and war and misery, perhaps we most truly reveal our belief in possibilities when we make the commitment to share our lives forever. And ever and ever. It is not a decision entered into lightly, for marriage is not a gamble across sunlit meadows. Oh, no. A long and arduous journey through <laughs> dark forest fraught with unseen dangers and sometimes disappointments. But it is the ultimate testament of man's refusal to accept despair. <laughs> <laughs> so, this time I turn to the congregation, I say, if anybody here knows why these two should not be joined in holy matrimony, let them speak now or forever hold its peace. I do. Not yet. I haven't asked you the question. No, 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 just wait, wait. Stuart, I don't know how to say this. No, it's OK. Go ahead. Look, these last few weeks, I don't think anyone could imagine asking for anything more. 
It's been the most exciting time in my entire life. I know. Look, I thought I was in love with you, but I'm more in love with love. I mean, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yes, I do. You know, when I look at my parents, they've been married for 20 years. It's been such hard work. You know, I realize that... We hardly know each other. You don't want us to get married either. <sighs> oh, thank God. <laughs> Doing. Brenda, we are not going to let you go through with this. We are stopping the wedding right here and right now. Too late, guys. It's already been stopped. Good. Oh. Good. Right. <clears throat> Why don't you ever give your son half a chance? You know, he wouldn't be such an idiot if he wasn't constantly trying to prove himself to you. Brenda, will you please let me take care of this? Oh, make no mistake, Stuart. You are an idiot. I can't believe I thought this weekend would be the beginning of anything. I can't believe I kept your damn ring here. Take it. I don't even want it. Brenda, wait. Are you going to get the ring, or are you going to leave it there as a tourist attraction? Yeah? Dylan, hi. Is Kelly there? Oh, sorry, Brenda. No, she's at a power luncheon with your brother. I guess that's why he didn't pick up his phone either. Something wrong, Brent? Can I help? No, I was just hoping that Kelly could come and get me. I guess I'm kind of stranded. That's OK. Just tell me where you're at, and I'll come. It's not quite that simple. Brent, it's not a problem. Listen, I'll just take the bus. Forget that I called, OK? Would you stop it already? Just tell me where you're at. I'll jump in the car. I'll come get you. Palm Springs? Thanks for coming to my rescue. If I can't do it, who can? Good question. I don't suppose you want to talk about it. It was going to be a romantic weekend with Stuart. I ended up seeing a side of him I had never seen before. Remember when we went to Baja and I made that little mistake? Little mistake? Bren, you lost your passport. We were stuck at the border for three hours. But no matter how bad things got, you were so understanding. We were able to put it behind us, even laugh about it. We ended up having a great time. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Stuart can't do that. I goofed, and he just couldn't let it go. It got pretty ugly. It's definitely over between us. Why is it that I can't keep any relationship going since I broke up with you? I guess you just got to find the right guy. Oh, I had the right guy. Then I lost him. I've never really gotten over you, Dylan. How can I fall in love with someone else when I'm still in love with you? Friend. I know, I know. It's not that I, I don't love you. It's just that you're not in love with me. Maybe I'm just feeling sorry for myself over the Stuart thing. I'm really glad we're still friends. So am I. So what do you say? You want to join everybody at David's? He's rechristening the place. Yeah. Oh, are you guys having a party or what? Hey, guys. Hi, guys. I'm glad you're here. Brent, aren't you supposed to be in Palm Springs with Stewie? Who? Thank God Dylan was nice enough to bring me home. Yeah, no problem. I'm gonna get some food. So, did you have a good time with the Chancellors? Mm, it was great. So, is this why you're so anxious for me to move out? Yeah, right. I want to get some food. I'm sure you're hungry from your long ride. Tell you what, Brian. If you ever feel the need to borrow her again, feel free. Sergeant, uh, do you have a Brenda Walsh down here? Yeah, she's here. The animal crusader. Yeah, can we see her? She's gonna be arraigned at 9:30. Visiting hours don't begin till 10:30. Otherwise, post her bail. How much? Bail was. Priest said at $50,000. What did she do? 
burglary, criminal trespass, destruction of property. She was arrested breaking into a research laboratory on the campus at CU. So, uh, how do I get her out of here? You can put up the 50 grand or go to a bondsman. There's one across the street that's open 24 hours. <sighs> Thank you. So, what do we do now? Well, I didn't want to come to this, but I think I'm going to have to tell her parents. I don't understand why we just didn't do that in the first place. I promised her I wouldn't. Well, I guess you're going to have to break your promise, aren't you? What's your problem, Kill? Why is it that every time Brenda's in trouble, she calls you first? Y you're not a guardian angel. Do you even hear what's coming out of your mouth? Huh? One of our friends is down here in trouble, and you're giving me a problem because I came down to get her out? Come on. I guess I'm just not used to having to bail my friends out of jail in the middle of the night. Hi, I'm sorry to barge in. No, come on. I just wanted to say thank you to both of you. Well, we didn't really do that much, Brent. I'm just uh, sorry we had to tell your parents. No, I was just being stupid. I don't know how I thought that I could keep that a secret. You OK? Yeah, a little scared. One night in jail is definitely enough to make me realize I don't want to go back. Yeah. Maybe you should have thought of that before. Kel. What? I'm sorry. I don't know what you expect from me. What about friendship? What about friendship? How far is this supposed to take us? What, do you just expect us all to jump in the jail cell with you, keep you company? What is your problem? You want to know what my problem is? I am sick and tired of stepping aside every time Brenda comes running to you with another crisis. Every time you call, he runs. Whether it's Palm Springs in the middle of the night or jail, wherever it is, he runs. He's not your boyfriend anymore. And obviously, you're not my friend anymore. Thanks again, Dylan. Bye. What? Got lousy timing. Miss Maggie, I figured you'd be on cloud nine about now. Jim told me about the review in the Condor. Yes, it was very generous. Described how I lit up the stage with desperation and passion, possessing a maturity beyond my years. Hmm, could this possibly be the same girl that I took fishing the day after she dropped out of Minnesota? Well, there is a vague resemblance. <laughs> Although, going fishing with you was definitely one of the best times I had all year. Better than starring in the play? Close. You know, I never got to properly thank you for my present. I think it worked. Well, I'm glad. And through all the audition craziness, you were really the only one who stood by me. Thank you. Brandon. Dylan. You go first. I was just going to excuse myself. I have to get to the theater. What were you going to say? Have a good show. All right, guys. Now's your chance to get back at Steve for everything he's ever possibly done. Or will do. Hey, hey, hey. Have a little mercy here, OK? Steve, as tempting as it may be, Dylan and I have something else in mind. Can we do? Oh! <laughs> Why are we doing this? Because it's a metaphor for our relationship. What relationship? The one that we used to have, the one that went round and round, and we'd get to the top, and then the bottom would just drop out. Oh, yeah. And as fate would have it, here we are, arriving at the top again. It looks that way. So, what's next, Brent? London. As in England? As in the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts. Roy Randolph got me this summer program over there. I leave right after finals. Well, you're going to love London. More than Paris? Oh, Brent, nothing can compare to Paris. Except maybe the bonsai pipe. Wow. I'm going to miss you, Dylan. Well, I'm going to miss you, too, Brad. 
Yeah. Hey. Hey, Dylan, can I come in? Uh, sure. What's up? Well, I was packing my bags for London, and I realized there was something I had to do before I left. But you don't leave for another week, Bren. I know, but what happens in this week could change the rest of my life. What's with all the melodrama? Sorry. I just needed to talk to you. I mean, I figured that you were the only person who would understand. What? I was with my parents this morning watching Brandon on TV. I saw it. I mean, there was my brother shaking hands with the President of the United States. You should see my parents, Dylan. There was such pride in their eyes. I've never seen them look at me like that, ever. Well, Brent. The only time I've ever felt anything close to that was when I was on stage. And then it wasn't just my parents, you know? It was like a whole audience applauding me. I want it, Dylan. That's why I'm going to London. I understand. I knew you would. You always understand me. You believe in me, don't you? Yeah, I do. Dylan, I love you. I've never stopped loving you. And I know now I never will. I'll applaud you from afar. I want more than your applause. I won't be gone forever, Dylan. Give me something to come back to. Thank you.